The sermon text today is from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 8. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despite those who abstain. Those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld. The Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. This is the word of the Lord. Do you have someone in your life who encourages you to be the best person you can be? Maybe it's a friend, a family member, or a teacher. Sometimes even a stranger makes a comment that stays with you for a long time. We graduating seniors would not be where we are if we did not have people in our lives who have encouraged us. In my life as an athlete, I have had multiple coaches that haven't had an influence on me. The one that stands out the most is my lacrosse coach, Mrs. Blaze. At some moments in the games, I became angry with myself because of a mistake I made and began to allow my negative thoughts to affect my performance. That's when Mrs. Blaze pulled me to the side and told me I was doing great and to focus on fixing my mistakes, not dwelling on them. She gave me advice in a calm manner, never raising her voice and always respectful. She is the reason why I stay focused and remain positive every game. My sermon today is about balcony people, which describes Mrs. Blaze and many others in my life, my parents, my grandparents, Sunday school teachers, and friends. This term was first used by a Baptist minister named Carlisle Marney in a sermon from the 1960s, which I read about in the book, Balcony People by Joyce Landorf. Balcony people sit in the balcony of our lives and cheer us on. They're leaning over the railing of the balcony shouting, you can do it, I believe in you, don't give up. Or maybe whispering to us, I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Their words give us strength, strength and confidence. In contrast, basement people pull us down with statements like, you're not good enough, you can't do it. Balcony or basement people can either be living or dead. They can be our loved ones who have passed, or former teachers, pastors, or friends or family. They form lasting memories in our minds and contribute to who we become. As Christians, God expects us to be balcony people to one another. The book talks about how early Christians were the first balcony people. They were, for example, Paul, John, James, Matthew, Luke, and other writers of the New Testament. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. In John chapter 1, verse 6, If we love God, we will do whatever he tells us to. And he told us from the very first to love each other. Carlisle Marney wrote that All Saints Day was a good time to remember the saints who have left, left us to find a new home in the presence of God, but who lean over that balcony to cheer us on as we continue to run the race of life. When we recite Apostles' Creed, we say we believe in the communion of saints. To explain this, Marney uses a metaphor of the human personality being like a house. It has a living room, a dining room, kitchen, bathroom, and bedrooms. It has a basement where the plumbing is and we keep the trash. Sometimes we live in the living room, sometimes in the kitchen, and sometimes we are in the basement. But if you go out of the house and onto the front lawn and look up, you see the balcony. On the balcony are people. Good influences in your life. Your parents may be there, your grandparents, teachers, coaches, as well as people you've never met before, but who influenced you like your great-great-grandparents, the 1802 founders of this church, former pastors, Mother Teresa, Moses, Mary, or the disciples. Landorf writes about three traits of balcony people. 
Number one, they honor and respect. Number two, they listen from the heart. And number three, they care from the heart. These traits didn't necessarily come naturally to early Christians, but was something they were taught by apostles. They were taught to love people set apart from how other people in the world loved, a special love inspired by God in the name of Christ. This teaching was confirmed by writers of the Bible. James chapter 4, verse 11. Don't criticize and speak evil about each other, dear brothers. If you do, you will be fighting against God's law of loving one another. In Paul's words in Romans chapter, nine, chapter 12, verse 9 through 10, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. We seniors will be going out into the world and hope to be successful in finding careers that we love and to be able to financially support ourselves. However, success is not defined only by the job you have or how much money you make, but by the kind of person you are. In the words of former First Lady Barbara Bush, never lose sight of the fact that the most important yardstick of your success will be how you treat other people, your family, friends, and coworkers, and even strangers you meet along the way. Now, I have a story to tell you about a little girl named Joanne. She had two parents and a little sister named Diane who she loved telling stories to. When she was six, she wrote a story about a rabbit who got the measles and visited, visited his friend, a giant bee named Miss Bee. Ever since that story, she wanted to be a writer, but barely told anyone because she was afraid that she didn't have hope. As she grew older, she was afraid to tell her parents that she really did want to be a writer because they felt getting a job as a secretary would be more practical. They were loving parents, but neither of them were college educated and did not see the purpose of a degree in English literature, saying it would not pay the bills. Joanne had one friend named Sean, however, who was the only person in her life to give her the confidence that someday she would be a good writer. She eventually went to college and worked as a secretary, then a teacher, got married, and had a child. Unfortunately, the marriage ended in divorce, she lost her job, and she became a single parent on welfare, struggling to make ends meet. During these dark times, she returned to her passion of writing and managed to finish a novel. She sent the novel to 12 different publishers who rejected it. She thought of her friend Sean and sent it to one more. The novel was published and eventually sold more than 500 million copies. You may know Joanne by her pen name, J.K. Rowling author of the Harry Potter series, and the world's richest author. She has given away much of her fortune to charities such as Amnesty International, where she used to work as a secretary. And her balcony person, Sean, he was the owner of a battered old Ford, which would later appear in one of the Harry Potter series as a flying car. The question is, who will you be? Will we be basement people or balcony people? We can live here, leave here today and make our own list in our minds of whose balcony we will stand on to lift up another person's spirit. We know that there will be basement people in our lives, but we need to recognize them and not let them have influence over us. And whatever you do, don't become a basement person. Do me a favor now. Please imagine your balcony people, your encouragers, whether they be here with you or pass on. Do you have some in mind? Please stand. Now turn around and look at your balcony and wave to those you imagined with a silent thank you. <laughs> you may turn around and please be seated. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray that we will always have people in our lives that will influence, encourage, and inspire us to be the best that we can be. We pray for friends who will speak the truth out of love for us Give us sound advice when we need it, and be of help in difficult times. Help us to be that kind of friend to them as well. In your name we pray. Amen.